Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to discuss what makes C++ 14 unique and what you need to be aware of to really get the most advantage out of the language and what the main features of C++ 14 are. Now, the last episode that I recorded was the episode on C++ 11. This is not exactly how these will air, I am aware of that, but I have up here the exact examples that I last left off on in C++ 11, and I'm going to use them to demonstrate how C++ 14 changed the language. Now, C++14, in many ways, in my opinion, is simply a bug fix to C++11. There's many little things that it adds, and most of them really come down to making the language more consistent internally. Now, starting up here at this count things here, I have auto, but I can add to this auto return type deduction. So this function right now, I'm currently returning void, and I already said I don't care what the type of count is. If you didn't watch the episode on C++11, I suggest that you go and watch it now. I'm going to go ahead and change my compiler standings to C++14 here, and if I want to return this count, because I don't care what the type is, I can, in C++14, actually say this is full auto return type deduction, and this will proceed as expected. Now our range-based for loops did not change in C++14, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this example. But our lambdas, on the other hand, changed in a couple of different ways. The first is generic. So I can, in C++14, right now I am saying that this is an integer i being passed in, but this is something that counts anything less than 3. Technically, this function could work with longs, floats, doubles, long longs, it could work with anything. So it is handy in C++14, I can make this an auto parameter type, and it doesn't matter what I get past it. I have asked the compiler to implicitly create a template for me. So this is item number two now. And we also get this generalized capture expression thing in C++14, and I will try to do my best to demonstrate this simply. In the C++11 example, I did not explicitly say what the captures can be or how they are used. And you can go and look at other videos for that. I'm just going to make a different version of this function here. Right now, I've got some value here. I can, in C++14, do this. This is known as a generalized capture expression. I can put pretty much anything I want to in here. And as I've said before, I've made many, many videos on lambdas in C++, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But let's just suffice to say, I can do something really weird like this in C++14, and this is completely valid C++. I have inside of my capture expression declared a new lambda that returns the value 3, immediately invoked it, and used that to capture this value here, which is the value 3. Now, this value is automatically deduced. There is no explicit way for me to say, I want this to be a float. That's not possible. That won't compile in any version of the language. This is going to be whatever the return type of this is. So if I really wanted this to be a double, I could do something like this. I could do something like this if I want it to be a float. Or I could do something like this to force it into some particular type. 
Not that any of this is good code, I'm just saying that these are all things that are possible in C14. And this becomes item number three now. And moving on, variadic templates did not change in C14. I will go ahead and delete that. And that brings us to a new item number four. We had unique pointer, but you might notice that we've got this new int five right here. C14 gave us a handy utility called make unique. And I can do this, which then also gives me the extra ability to stop repeating myself. And I can say, please make this unique thing. And it is going to be called pointer. And it is a unique pointer to an integer initialized with the value of five. This was a definite oversight in the language, and it is relatively easy using variadic templates and forwarding and move semantics that were added in C11 to actually give yourself a version of Make Unique in C11 if you were so inclined. But this Make Unique fills a hole, a hole in the language that is quite critical because now, as of C14, we can say, that we should probably never see any new or delete at all explicitly written in our code. We can use make unique, make shared. I didn't mention make shared in either the C11 or the C14 videos. And I'm still not going to really dig into it because it is a very heavy hammer in C11. 11 and it does have its uses it is an important tool for automatic memory management but in my opinion make unique and unique pointer are much more important to focus on now we had our const expert in c 11 but it gets much better in c 14 so in c 14 if i wanted to This simple construct in C11 would have been invalid. In C14, our const expert gets much more flexible. We can have loops, we can have branches, we can have multiple return statements. We can do pretty much anything we want to inside of a const expert function in C14, except for call other functions that are not const expert in a non const expert context. And really digging into that is going to take more time than we're aiming for in this video. But this is where we are so far with the top five features of C14. So these are the things that I think really make C14 important and different from C11. These are the things that you need to pay attention to if you want to get the most out of C14. So again, thank you for watching this episode. Be sure to subscribe and go and watch all of the other videos that I've got on here on Lambdas if you really want to learn more about them because the stuff that we can do with Lambdas between C++ 14, 17, and 20, it gets kind of ridiculous. But uh, for the moment, we're just focusing on C++ 14 really simplifies, unifies the language in many ways, makes things much more consistent than they were. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this video.